big Fannie Willis in Georgia might be sitting on some evidence and we have questions about this because a new transcript was just released that seems to imply that she knew that the alternate electors that have been charged with crimes are not actually guilty because they didn't have any intentionality behind the crimes alleged. In other words, they were doing things that were legal based on prior precedent and Fannie knows that and she's charging them anyways. This is based on the 1960 alternate electors that were used by the Democrats in the state of Hawaii. And so the new plan by the alternate electors in 2020 was based upon that. And they communicated that before all of this charging even happened, which begs the question, why did Fannie bring the charges in the first place? This case involves David Schaefer, another co-defendant. We know Trump's being prosecuted with 18 other co-defendants. And before we take a look at the actual transcripts, here is some background on what is going on. This comes over from the Federalist, and this is an exclusive. They say Big Fannie Willis, who is the biggest DA in the state of Georgia, possesses evidence exonerating Georgia's alternate electors. And we're going to read through the transcripts here, of course, but a little bit of background here from Sean Fleetwood. He says, Big Fannie does possess evidence that exonerates several Republicans in the legal crusade against Trump. In her indictment, she said that a bunch of people were involved in a conspiracy to overturn the 2020 election. She claimed that David Schaefer, who is a state senator from the state of Georgia, you see this guy right here, says that this guy, other alternate electors, unlawfully falsely held themselves out as duly elected and qualified electors and saying that they did this intentionally, right? That's the legal term of art intentionally attempted to mislead figures like Mike Pence into believing that they were actually such officers. So saying that we're not placeholders, we are actually the actual ones like just take ours over theirs and that they're exercising that authority, which is different than what they did in Hawaii back in 1960, which is exactly what this was mirrored upon, as we'll see. However, among the documents that Willis obtained during her years long investigation was a meeting transcript. Now, this is a transcript of a George Georgia Republican electors December 14, 2020 meeting. Federalists got a copy of this. It explicitly shows that the intent behind casting the alternate electors, and remember, this is before they counted the electoral ballots, right? This is before January 6, when Mike Pence was there. So none of this has even gone down yet. This is a transcript from a pre-J6 meeting. At the meeting, it shows the intent, what they were intending to do behind the purpose of alternate electors. And in it, they say the purpose was not to impersonate public office officers, as Big Fanny alleges, but to lawfully preserve Trump's legal challenge of the election results, just like the Democrats did in 1960. At the meeting's outset, Schaefer specifically noted how they were acting as Republican nominees for presidential elector, not duly elected and qualified electors. Republican nominees for the position of a presidential elector, but not the actual electors. Now, I know this is nuanced, so it's probably hard for Fanny to figure it out, but let's see. It says President Trump has filed a contest to the certified returns. That contest is pending, has not been decided. And so look, in order to preserve his rights, Trump, while all of this challenge is happening, it's important that the Republican nominees meet here today and cast their vote. So they give us some context. Schaefer and Trump filed a lawsuit against Raffensperger, alleging tens of thousands of illegal votes had been cast. Suit came after a recount requested by Trump. They deemed Biden the winner and the recount prompted some lawsuits. December 14th arrives, the day on which the nominees are required by federal law to meet, Trump and Schaefer's lawsuit was still pending, right? All this stuff is still going on. So at that time, Georgia Republican nominees, including Schaefer, cast their votes for Trump while the states cast theirs. Then they jump into the meeting and we'll jump over into the meeting. But I wanted to share with you, this is exactly the same thing that happened in Hawaii. This is the form of the Democratic electors from the election of 1960 state of Hawaii, the original documents. Uh, we, the undersigned electors of president and vice president for the respective terms beginning on this day, one of our Lord and so on, hereby certified and delivered to us by the executive of the state, having met and convened at the Capitol in Honolulu in state and pursuance with the constitution on this day in 1960. Look, we do hereby certify that being so assembled and organized, we proceeded to vote by ballot and balloted first for such president and then for such vice president, the distinct ballots, 
and we further certify the following are two distinct lists, one for the president, the other for vice president. Here's who we vote for. Hawaii, three electoral votes. Guess who they go for? John F. Kennedy. Now, at the time they signed this document, he did not win the state of Hawaii at the time they signed this. His vice president, LBJ, also wins according to them. But that's not what actually happened. At the moment that these three people signed this, in witness hereof, done at the Capitol in the city of Honolulu, being the 1960 day, okay, that was, the, they were the alternate electors. They mailed it in. We do hereby certify that the lists and the of all the votes in the state of Hawaii for president and of all the votes given for VP are contained herein, signed in by these three uh, apparently felons, according to Big Fanny Willis. And they actually mailed this in. Can you believe this? They they mailed this into Washington, D.C., just like they did in 2020. Look at these stamps and everything. And they're saying this was, you know, each one of these things was like an overt act by the alternate electors. They put it in an envelope. They typed something up, blah, blah, blah. And they mailed it in. And each one of those things is an overt act in furtherance. So this looks like it's pretty official. Now, if you read the history on this thing, we made a prior video about this, but they, you know, this was all actually legitimate. These people were never investigated because they did the recount and they actually said, oh yeah, JFK did win Hawaii. So they just flipped it back over to the other side, which is exactly the point. Like the other side anchored in their their position so that if the pendulum swings the other way, they're ready to go. And that's exactly what was happening in Georgia. And so this is the actual transcript and we can see it here. This is the meeting, Electoral College of Georgia, meeting and transcribe 12-14-2020 before January 6th. And it's always strange to me when a RICO conspiracy is documented in uh, court transcripts or, or meeting transcripts. Isn't that incredible? Here's what we see. This is about a meeting of the Electoral College of Georgia regarding Georgia's electoral votes for president and VP. Certified copy. Meeting took place December 14th, 12.05 p.m. Georgia State Capitol, Atlanta, Georgia. You gotta imagine, you know, Big Fanny is a very competent person, you know, very cap capable, definitely should be, you know, qualified to be in her position and she knows exactly what she's doing and she's ready for a speedy trial, except she wants to change the rules for the defense if they ask for a speedy trial. But the point is she is prepared for this. And so certainly she's done her homework and she knows that there was a meeting of the electoral college of Georgia. Okay. <laughs> she's investigating uh, January 6th, a racketeering case. So the idea that she doesn't know about this is insane, right? Obviously she, I, I would imagine she's got her hands on this. I don't know where this came from, but it's probably, you know, from the defense. And look who is here representing the 2020 electors for Georgia, David Schaefer, chairman, along with a bunch of other people, many of whom who have been charged with actual crimes here. Once again, documenting their crimes, their felonies, their RICO racketeering case in transcripts. We've also got lawyers here representing President Trump. We got Ray Smith from Smith and Liss is there. So they definitely know this meeting took place. Big Fanny's, if she doesn't know about this, that's kind of misconduct, right? So the chairman, the man who's been charged here, he says, uh, my name is David Schaefer. I'm the chairman of the Georgia Republican Party. Hi, everybody. Uh, the hour of noon having arrived is my privilege to call to order this meeting of the Republican nominees for the Electoral College from the state of Georgia. Says the president, Trump, has filed a contest to the certified returns here. Uh, that contest is pending. It has not been decided or even heard by any judge with the authority to hear it. And so in order to, look, preserve his rights, it's important that the Republican nominees for presidential elector meet here today and cast their votes for the preservation of Trump's rights. Just like what the Democrats did in 1960. Incredible. For my observation, Schaeffer says, 13 of the 16 nominees are present here. The first order of business is for the electors who are present to fill the three vacancies for those who are not present. Is there a motion here to elect these other people, Mark, Brad, and Bert? Miss Fisher, I so move. Joseph says second. It's been moved and seconded that Mark, Brad, and Bert are now elected. Any discussion on the motion? All right, all in favor? Say aye. Aye. All right, all right, eyes have it. Motion carries. We now have a full slate of 16 presidential electors. And a big bummer for those three people who got voted in for Brad, Bert, and Mark. Now they're hanging out with felons, Big Fanny says. David says, I'm going to pause for a moment and just say that Pat Garland, one of our presidential electors, his wife died last week. Rest in peace. 
piece, Miss Garland. And he is taking care of his family. All our hearts, obviously, all go out to him. So we're going to suspend for a moment while the paperwork is prepared to protect the new slate of effectors. And we're going to hang out for a minute. They take a short break. They're back 12, 11 p.m. Chairman Schaefer's back on the record, says. <clears throat> all right. Is there any objection to Carolyn Fisher serving as the secretary of this meeting? All right. The chair hearing no objection. And Carolyn Fisher is now the secretary of this meeting. All right, Miss Secretary, if you would please call the roll of the presidential of uh, the presidential electors, the future felons, according to Big Fanny. Joseph Brandon, here. Ken Carroll, here. Vicky, here. Carolyn, here. David, here. John, here. No, I'm sorry. Uh, John's not here. I'm sorry. He was replaced. Uh, sorry about that. He was substituted. Uh, Kathy, here. Daryl, here. David Schaefer, here. And so on. Everybody's here. Look at all these felons just announcing their criminal intention. A RICO Act. A racketeering case. On the record. Unbelievable. So the chairman says, I'm sorry. Uh, can I confer with you a moment? Okay, we got to elect one more. Uh, Robert, you need me to elect one more? He says, one of our, one of our presidential electors has is no longer eligible because he registered to vote in another state to further his college studies. Ah, oh, college. Is there a motion to elect John as a substitute? Yeah, I move. Second. It's been moved. I seconded that John is going to be now an elector. John Downey is now a presidential Republican candidate for presidential elector. A candidate, right? Like a nominee. He is not the official elector, but he is a candidate for it consistently throughout this whole thing. And he's present? Yes, sir. Chairman David says, all right. And so all 16 are present and we're going to conduct the voting momentarily here. Ray Smith is a lawyer for President Trump. Do you wish to make any comments, Ray, the lawyer? Mr. Smith's Trump's attorney says, yes, I would. We're, we're conducting this as Chairman Schaefer said. We're conducting this because the contest of the election in Georgia is ongoing at this time. And and so we continue to contest the election of the electors in Georgia. And so we're going to conduct this in accordance with the Constitution of the United States. And we're going to conduct the electorate today. Look, similar to what happened in 1960 in Hawaii. Okay, that's Trump's lawyer. <laughs> That's Trump's lawyer saying, hey, we're just going to follow what the Democrats did, literally. And they did it. This is the document. And Big Fanny should know about that and this document and these people. And these people were not charged with felonies for any of this. So Trump's lawyer is communicating that on the record. And the chairman says, exactly, right? Because while something is pending, you still make your claim. If you both are running a race past the finish line and you both think you won, both people declare I won until they get the photographic evidence and confirm it, right? Everybody says, I won, I won, I won. They say you won, you did not. But both people claim it. You never go, oh, well, you won. I'll just I default to you. I, I know it was close. I'm pretty sure I won. But since it's contested and since democracy, I'm just going to let you win. No, of course not. You hold it up until the end. You preserve your right. That's exactly what was happening here. So chairman is explaining that. He says, hey, and if we did not hold this meeting, Trump's lawyer, then our election contest would effectively be abandon. Is that? That's correct. Is that not correct? That's correct, says Trump's lawyer. And so the chairman says, so the only way for us to have any judge consider the merits of our complaint, otherwise it's moot, right? If you don't have, if you're not preserving your record, if you're not preserving your claim, how can you fight to win? Judge is going to say, you don't even have your electors in place based on what the law says you need to have. So the thousands of people who we allege voted unlawfully is for us to have this meeting and permit the contest to continue. Is that not correct? The only way for any court to actually consider this, including the claim that thousands voted unlawfully, is to permit, we have to have this meeting to allow the contest to continue. Is that right, Mr. Trump's lawyer? That's correct. Yep, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. So Mr. Sinner says, okay, so Chairman Schaefer, yes, sir? I've got a John Isaacson here who replaced this other person and this person's being replaced. Do you know who these people are if you saw them? Yeah. So how are you going to distribute the ballots one at a time? Okay, so I want to thank Carolyn Fisher for her service as the secretary of this meeting, says the chairman. Because the documents have been prepared with Sean, the prior guy, still listed as the secretary, I would like to avoid reprinting the documents and that there should be a motion to thank Carolyn Fisher for her service and to elect Sean still 
as the proper secretary of the meeting. So sorry, Carolyn, you're gone out of here. We already printed the documents with Sean's name on them. So Sean, you're the new secretary. <laughs> so it moved, second? Okay, it's all moved. Any discussion? Nope. The motion carries, Sean still is elected. He's the permanent secretary of this meeting. Thank you, Carolyn, you did a great job here for the five minutes you were the secretary. Sean, please forward the documents over, get the documents from Carolyn. Are the ballots around? Yeah, the ballots are individual. So what do you want me to do? You want me to call them out by name? Yeah, huh? So they're figuring out how to sign them. Call the name, right? They call all the names. Six, they'll walk up one at a time. Daryl, Kathy, Brad, Mark, David, K, another Mark. They all vote. Do we have 16 votes cast? 16 votes have been cast for Vice President Pence, and 16 have been cast for Vice President Trump. Congratulations. Is there any other business to come before this meeting? Hearing none, the chair declares this meeting of the Republican nominees for the Electoral College. Somebody's waving in the background. Hey, don't end it yet. Wait, are you trying to get my attention? He says, yes, yes. We must complete some paperwork in private to certify. He says, okay, so we'll adjourn this meeting. And then if the electors would remain behind for a few minutes, we're gonna complete the paperwork, nothing else. The meeting of the electors is hereby adjourned. The meeting ends 1231. Very short meeting. This transcript is certified by the court, the transcript reporter and Hanson disclosure according to the rules of the meeting. I'm certified court reporter and we have an index of the conversation. All right, so these are people meeting of the Electoral College of Georgia, and it's a bunch of people, including an elected state senator from Georgia, right? These are people working for the party, having a business meeting, to preserve their claim in the events that the count gets reversed, just like what happened in Hawaii. Now they got charged with crimes. These people have not been charged with crimes because Big Fanny Willis is hiding the exculpatory evidence. And I think that she knows about this. I think it's misconduct if she doesn't know about it. And so she must know about it. And the fact that she charged this in the first place is just crazy because what we saw in that conversation was that they were not at any point in time saying, we know we lost and we're going to overturn the election or that we are actually submitting these to replace the other actual electors. This was all regular business. They transcribed the whole thing because they were following the rules just like the Democrats did. But Big Fanny's not interested in legitimate justice or above board prosecutions. She's much more interested in waging political warfare and will continue to cover. Mm -hmm.